Ron DeSantis is declaring that he's running for president, and he's doing it in a Twitter spaces with Elon Musk tonight. And there's someone who's not very happy about this choice of venue. That person is Whoopi Goldberg. Take a listen. Now he just has to work on, you know, be articulate so we know what you're talking about. He would, th th I don't understand. I didn't know what he was saying. And look, you know what, this idea of announcing on Twitter, I, I, I'm old and I'm okay being old. <laughs> Do that on television, okay? Well, I, I want to see you do it on television. I want to see you actually take real Americans' questions. That's what I want. I, I, I don't want to dislike you. I can't help it because you give. <laughs> this whole you're audience, not, hey? You don't give me any reason because I don't understand. Why do you dislike people of color? What's wrong with American history? Yeah. What's wrong with gay folks? You know, Anita Bryant did this stuff in 1975, and gay folks rose up yeah. and fought for what they needed. That's what's coming, man. You what, you, that's what's coming. Oh, no. I it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You know, and that's not a, you know, that's not a threat. Well, the women they are coming, pay, too. They pay, yeah. yes, they pay the same taxes I pay. They want the same things that we're entitled to as taxpayers. You can't pick and choose, and you're not asking your constituents, you're telling them what you're doing. And that is not the American way. Everybody's supposed to be deciding what they want for their state, sir, not just you. Yes. We'll be right back. Is this as simple as television star prefers that television <laughs> remains the dominant uh, uh, medium? It's a weird thing to be upset about. It sounds substantively what she's upset about is that she doesn't like Ron DeSantis or his politics. And doesn't know what Twitter space is. Right. Is. She's confusing that with the critique of the medium. You can ask people. Uh, people use Twitter well, well, to lob questions. First at of all, nobody during their presidential announcement is taking questions. Right. She's confusing a town hall with a presidential announcement. I don't think in the history of presidential announcements, announcements there's been a Q&A. Certainly not. Uh, on, from someone who is not ideologically aligned, who's asking mm -hmm. you questions about stuff you obviously don't agree with, and that's why you're running pr for president. I also think this weird implication that there are fewer real people on Twitter than elsewhere, or that there's somehow more access to democracy on television than on Twitter is pretty silly. Right. Now, I, I will say that I have found people that People are Twitter, chosen for those town halls a lot of times. That, that's true know, as well. Yeah, gate kept in some vetted, way. Yeah. Uh, depending on the setup for the Twitter spaces, yeah, you can have anybody come in yeah. and ask a question. Well, you can have everybody any, come, anybody come in, but historically, the Twitter spaces that I've watched, there have not been questions that have been taken from members of the crowd that aren't friends and associates mm -hmm. of Elon Musk. So, you know... There'll there'll be a, a number of people who are called on by the moderator, but there, it's not as though there's a free for all. And one of my frustrations with Twitter Spaces, as compared to say the Colin app, um, is that on Colin there's a chat feed, or Instagram has this as well. While you're watching somebody's Instagram live, you can chat. So even if you're not brought onto the prover proverbial digital stage, you can make your questions known. People can pull questions from the chat. If a lot of people have the same question, it's very difficult to ignore if you flood the chat zone. I remember when I was watching the Elon Musk BBC interview, I was very curious to, to hear Elon answer a question about the Twitter files. I was frustrated that the BBC reporter didn't realize like, that was going on in the news at the time and that he should ask the question. And then after he voluntarily just ended the interview and left, and Elon stayed on answering uh, questions that the moderator was coming up with. Um, I was like, Twitter files, Twitter files. Everybody on, on Twitter was saying Twitter files, Twitter files, Twitter files, like underneath the tweet of the Twitter live. But it was very difficult to make that known within the context of the Twitter space. Eventually, somebody texted the moderator that question, and he ended up asking it to Elon. But, you know, it is not quite as democratic right. as other kind of digital spaces, but it's still at least as democratic, arguably much more democratic television. than television. Yeah. So that that was a very weird comment to make, I think. And then she went into, yeah, just a general critique of DeSantis, you know, some of those things. I, I don't think her framing of it, that he hates black people or hates gay people, is particularly fair. I think one can object to the policies that have been implemented and think they impact those groups in some way that is not good. Um, the framing is going to be the framing. The framing is the framing. You know, when people, liberals, were arguing that the war in Iraq was a bad idea, 
They were said to hate America. <laughs> we, we, you know, French fries were hating America. <laughs> we needed freedom fries. I mean, we, we, I'm not saying it's a, it's a good thing, but that kind of hyperbolic language is everywhere. Um, you, should, you should not hate your country. You should mistrust your government. <laughs> don't hate the country. You know, don't hate the people in it. Be very irritable when the government does policies you don't like. So, yeah, but when, when the government or when the government of Florida chooses to target African-American history classes and say that in public universities I'm going to get rid of disciplines that I don't personally agree with, um, when you're targeting um, books, uh, not DeSantis personally, but in school, like we were talking about earlier, the, the ABCs of black history and books on famous black poet Langston Hughes. Well, that wasn't DeSantis. That was no, one no. Crazy as I parent. said, I very clearly stipulated that it wasn't DeSantis. I, I, if anyone's clear, if anyone missed it, rewind ten seconds. I very clearly said it wasn't DeSantis, but it was happening in a Florida school district. Like I, you know, it's it's. I don't think it's unreasonable to, for people to start to feel targeted. So it's incumbent on DeSantis to make the case for why his candidacy is going to be good for black people and gay people and Latinos and any other group that might have felt targeted by some of his policies. And, you know, if he doesn't want to make that case, if he thinks he can win without a greater share of members from those groups, then he can wear, win without a greater share of members from those groups. Yeah, we've talked about Republicans, uh, in theory, go going into 2022, we talked a lot about maybe Republicans doing better. I think not necessarily with, um, with black voters, although the percentages there are so terrible, even, uh, like, I think... Trump did like improve over, he over did. He Romney's total, but it's meaningfully spiked. improved. Yeah, uh, we, we talked a lot about Latino uh, uh, Latinos flocking to Republicans. Um, that has been somewhat true in Florida for sure. I don't know that it, it's been true necessarily nationally, um, but it, it has been an interesting phenomenon. To obviously, Florida is a heavily Latino state, and Florida has gone you know over the course of our lifetimes, the, the last. 22 years from a real blue state or a swing state to a pretty solidly red state, um, even as uh, there's, you know, other states remain swing states. And you know, Trump did well in the Midwest in 2016, and then didn't do well in the Midwest in 2020. But Florida has moved in the Republican direction. Um, I mean, over DeSantis's tenure, right? He he barely eked out his victory um, when he ran the first time. Re-election was, you know, a, a smashing success for him. And that's probably, you know, we didn't talk about that as much uh, earlier today, but probably that's a big pitch. Uh, this should be part of his pitch that he's the better candidate than Trump is like, look at the, I don't have control over the entire national party the way Trump does. Trump does have control of the entire national party and uh, for various reasons is serving up candidates that didn't do very well at the margins. I only have control over what's going on in Florida and this state is getting redder and redder and whatever I'm doing seems to, is electorally successful, at least so far. Sure. It's also true that the 2020 ballot line where Donald Trump won in Florida, they also, 60 percent of Floridians voted for a $15 minimum wage. It's also true that the most successful candidate with Latino voters in recent history is Bernie Sanders, who won 70 percent of Nevada with uh, 70 percent of the Latino vote in Nevada, even though the well, some pretty ser um, significant unions, like the Culinary Union, endorsed Joe Biden. Uh, the rank and file chose instead to endorse uh, Bernie Sanders. And there's some questions about uh, what exactly is attracting Latino voters that no one seems to be getting right. The Democratic Party seemed to think that saying we like people of color was sufficient or having representation in, in politics and saying that you're going to fight for more representation in the corporate workforce was going to make people feel like they should vote for Democrats. That obviously wasn't it. More Very Latinx mixed. representation in the workforce. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, there's um, sorry, I, I uh, the, the point of the matter is that, you know, Biden has really failed on this. When Bernie was making those strides, Biden famously paid, played Desposito into a microphone, and that was his version of Latino outreach. There's this feeling that simply saying we are going to be more gentle on immigration or more compassionate with our immigration policies was going to do the trick. There's very mixed feelings about immigration. And moreover, Biden has been he has kept many of the Trump era programs in effect. A child died in um, immigration custody 
uh, earlier this month, which has gotten very little uh, play as compared to how much play it would have gotten if not a lot Trump of tears from had been some legislators in office when it happened. So I think I, I think you're right. The Latino vote is a really big question mark, and maybe some people should consider to reach, reaching out to some uh, leftists to see whether it was in fact some working class policies that were appealing to this disproportionately working class uh, ethnic group. More rising right after this.